Hey guys, Black Temple here again. The next part in the series. Now, we've got the, uh, I think it's the third, no, this is the second color, the second color down on the, uh, the grenade launcher on the left arm. And, uh, if I can get the camera to have a good look at that, we can get going. So, we got a nice variation of dark and light colors, emulating a real steel or a dark iron. But, uh, what we're gonna do now. Since I made my way down to freaking Walmart and got this for some reason huge bottle of white paint that I don't need, uh, we're gonna paint on this insignia finally. I've been meaning to do that for quite some time. Now, I may have to warn you for right now. I have to warn you right now, actually. Um, painting white is probably my my color that I have least skill with. Let me tell you that right now, because sometimes you can't get the right consistency. And sometimes it does not dry smooth, and I just haven't, for some reason, I haven't gotten it down on how to, to really work with it yet. This seems pretty straightforward. This color seems pretty straightforward, though. It doesn't seem to be too thin or too thick, so I'm going to try and just paint as I would normally with, like, the other colors. Just paint straight onto it. Water, maybe slightly. So I'm just going from the actual bottle cap to a cup of water right off the bat to just like a real quick dab in the water to make it a little bit uh, a little bit smoother going down. And I think regardless of what happens, I'm going to have to do two coats of this just because of its nature. And white, white doesn't cover, you know, that's going to be too bright too. White doesn't cover very well. So, lighter colors usually, matter of fact, don't cover very well. So you usually have to go over them a couple of times. And if this doesn't turn out like I want it to, then I'm seriously just going to paint this thing a bright, a bright gray and call it quits because I wasn't real enthused about painting this thing white to be honest I just I'm not very good at white and usually I would say just practice 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 and you'll get better but man it's just painting white is a pain in the ass it really is so that's gone down One or two small spots I gotta get real fast. What's nice about white though is it covers really easily. So if you mess up and you have to go over it with a different color, it's like black, it'll cover over really, really easy. And I say that because I am making a mess of this, to be sure. Oh my goodness. And bounce along the middle again. Just trying as best I can to really make it a smooth consistency around the whole thing. And I mean, you're not going to be really get it really nicely on this camera. This is a light. I'm going to do the best I can for you. That's on there now. It looks great from I'm looking at the frame. And it looks great, but it actually looks like ass. So that's down now as best as it's going to be right now. So we'll go over that in a minute again. For now though, we're going to work on the grenade launcher again to try and make some progress with that. A good amount of progress at least. At least a good amount of progress. So I'm going to go ahead, grab your silver, and start to basically just uh, pick out some, some places on the model that I want to, to exaggerate some wear. So like on the magazine, the magazine's inherently going to get pretty messed up because it's going to be taken out and put back in all kinds of times. Just going to drop a little bit on the edges of the magazine. And the inside of the magazine, of course. And it's cool if you're hitting areas that you don't want to inherently be touching with paint 
because it's this is since this is weathering type this is a worn type of look it'll look natural it won't look like you unless you, you really are picky about how this goes it'll look pretty natural if you make a mistake because it's that's that's in real life the effect that you're after you're after a real you know when people drop stuff or they they rub up against stuff and they make uh, marks on it that's the kind of effect you're trying to get so if you do it in real life by accident it's gonna make it look natural so I'm just touching all these bolts that are around the cylinder you can see just there just real lightly tapping all these bolts because just like in dry brushing and uh, in highlighting the raised bits and when you're when you're wearing something out is the stuff that's going to get hit all the time and I'm going to do this cable or this pipe or whatever you'd like to call this entirely in silver because I want a bit of differentiation or I want a bit of I guess differential difference I don't know I'm not sure the tense present tense or what tense I'm supposed to use in that word anywho I want it to look different so I'm going to make that pipe that tube sort of a bright silver in it in its own right and then I'm going to head inside here real fast. And then, of course, just wherever there's a bolt, tapping the bolt. And then, actually, I need to touch that real fast because I don't need silver right there. Kind of rub that off as best I can. It doesn't look like it's coming off very well. So, hopefully, when we come along with the black, it'll come off better. All right, looks good. Okay. Back in with the gray. I thought about making a uh, or the silver. I thought about making a uh, a war machine thread earlier today. But realistically speaking, I don't think too many people would look into it. And so I mean, not a huge deal, you know. So why mess with it? And I'm gonna really hit this, the barrel of the weapon here, the muzzle and the barrel, because it's gonna get messed up all the time. This thing is gonna get fired all the time. It's gonna be messed with all the time. Parts are gonna get changed out all the time. So I'm really gonna go over it pretty heavily with that. And the last part I'm gonna do is the ejection port. And this is probably the area that's going to see the most wear and tear. Because the ejection port is going to have shells spitting out of it all the time. People are going to be unjamming it. You know, this is where it's going to be real heavy. There we go. So now that all that's down there, we can finally cap all this silver and make our transition into washing this grenade launcher with black to dull it down and knock back the color a little bit. Because <clears throat> the silver is pretty heavy. It's, uh, I don't want to say it's bright, but it's, it's lighter than it needs to be. So I'm just going to grab some of the black on the brush, real little amount of it, dip it a bunch of times in the water to get most of it off, and then just apply it liberally and then just go in with pure water and add water to it to get it to move around like I want it to. And this is a little bit of a balancing act. Uh, I'm really just gauging the amount of water I need um, based on how much time I've actually done this before in the hobby so I mean there's not a real, I can't really explain how to do this part uh, I, I suppose the best I could say is um, push the black around into all the areas that you want to be really exaggerated. I suppose that's the best way I can put it. Just see there. I'm going to get it out of these shells because those shells got to be painted a different color. And now you can see the ejection port really come to life right there. And that pipe as well. So now the weapon has gone down now. Now I'm gonna take it out of the muzzle, it's, uh, just the, uh, the entrance, the, uh, the exit of the muzzle there, and I'm gonna put an actual drop of just black in there because I don't want it to dry 
real thin. That's supposed to be shadow. Like this is supposed to be an open piece of metal. So I want it to, to dry real, real heavy and, and dark. So I'm just going to apply straight black into that hole. And then just wipe my finger over the top to take off any of the excess to make it look perfectly circular. Now it doesn't look perfectly circular because the, the, the paint is pooling, but when it dries, it'll look much better, trust me. And there we are. Finished grenade launcher as well. I just got to touch uh, some bronze or some uh, gold, however you want to say, into those, uh, those shells to make them look like shells. And then I'm going to draw up right now. Since this, this, oh, this white, it looks like it's dry. I mean, I don't. Let's give it a whirl. Go over this white again. Now, when you uh, you can see sometimes on the model, and I got. A, I think I have one or two spots to show you right now. You can see one or two spots here on the model where it's a little bit the color on the shoulder pad. You can see it kind of nicely. This color on the shoulder pad, if I get something pointy, is a little bit. It looks kind of. Uh, modeled and kind of rough, it's kind of like a rough bit of paint, like it's not smooth paint. It, it's kind of like uh, bumpy is what I want to say. And you kind of get that, that feeling on the white, you can't see very well, but the white has that, that check, that texture of its own that's kind of bumpy. When you come up and you finish with your matte sealer, which we're going to do, which is going to be this here, it's just a lacquer, but um, it's a sealer. Once you hit that, it's going to really flatten all, uh, flatten out all these areas that look kind of t uh, rigid or it looks like they got too much texture to them. So you don't have to worry too much about your uh, certain colors that you've done looking that way because they will come back down once you apply that finish to it. Now if anything, if anything, when I'm doing this white, I want it to flood so much that it falls to the rest of the model on this blue because I can fix it. I can fix the blue real easily. It'll be inherently difficult to keep going back and forth with the white. So I'm really okay with the the white getting too too much of uh, too much coverage because the blue is really easy to fix it with. It would be much harder to sit here and go really slow with the white. Trust me. I'm just gonna do the edges. Just like so. And that's the insignia. Now, I did overflow it, so we're going to have to come back and fix it with blue. Just like originally planned, that was really was originally planned, just to mess with it so much that I can just come back with blue and fix everything instead of having to try and sit there and daddle with it. I'm pretty sure I just invented the word daddle. I'm sure dabble is a word that I could have said dabble. Anywho, grab the gold real fast, do them shelves. In reality, in reality, shells have a, well, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's difficult, I mean, the best way to say is look at these shells that are here on the, on the base. I mean, you're after that kind of color is what you're really trying to do. So, very carefully, and I do mean very carefully. And without touching any of these black areas, of course. Just hitting those shells really carefully. I think there's one that's on its way in, and that's going to be a bit of trouble. There we go. Perfect. That looks really great. So now we got shells inside the gun, or the launcher, as it were. I'm gonna add a little bit of variety here. We got the gold out, and I think I'm gonna try that because I'm, I'm like I'm kind of liking how that seems. I'm gonna take some gold here, some bronze, some whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm gonna put it on these these sort of apertures here that hold the pickaxe together. Offer a little bit more variety. Just going real lightly around this sort of uh, two pieces of metal here that are bolted together to make the one weapon handle. And this is just something I wasn't even planning. I just I got the I got the gold out and I kind of would like to see how this would look. This would look so I'm just going to go with it. And that's how we do this, man. If it looks good, and if you think it looks good, then do it. Who cares? It doesn't have to have to look 
anything like the picture on the, the box or you know since this doesn't come with instructions it's easier to ignore <laughs> so I got a cold I got a gold looking sort of uh, yeah, focus to go there we go gold sort of clamp I would actually do that other one too to make it look uniform might as well I like that it looks kind of cool and it looks make, it makes it look more interesting like we were getting back to uh, in a couple videos ago or maybe even last video it just makes it more interesting to look at this pickaxe is dominantly a gray color it's uh it's pretty much only a gray color you got a silver here and there but silver is pretty close to gray so offering a little bit of variety will make it much more fun to look at i hope you can see that i hope i'm in the frame there we go and i'll come back over again onto these bolts with the silver color so they'll still look like bolts instead of painted bolts, you know. And there we are. Pretty sweet. And there's the finished grenade launcher. It's all dirtied up and it looks real nice. And the weathering, the silver, the scratches that we did earlier, those are coming through still. And that's what we're after. That's exactly what we're trying to get. And this is moving along quite well. All we got to do is the base and some touching up. And that's about it. So, touch up the freaking white too. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. BT, take it easy. Cheers.